start, y'all. So the Atlanta Hawks, they came into this offseason saying that their primary goal for this upcoming season was to make and make some noise in the NBA playoffs. And so far, they've done a stellar job at staying true to that promise. Uh, they drafted well, and they've already made some great moves in free agency to help them win some more games now. But they're also looking like they're going to be set up for the future as well. So great things coming from Atlanta so far. They started off by making a trade with the Detroit Pistons in which they sent Dwayne Dedman to Detroit for Kyrie Thomas and Tony Snell. Now the Atlanta Hawks for sure did not need Dwayne Dedman. He was at best their third best center now uh, if you include their draft picks of Nyeka Kungu and they already have Clint Capella and even John Collins could play some five. So again, there's really no need to keep Dwayne Dedman around on the roster. And in return, they got Kyrie Thomas, who, uh, if I'm not mistaken, they already waived. So he wasn't probably going to see minutes anyway on the court. But they also add in Tony Snell, who is going to be a 6'6 wing player and has been hidden away on Detroit and Milwaukee for most of his career. So, uh, you know, if you haven't heard much about him, don't blame yourself. Uh, he's just been on some low market franchises. And now he finds himself on the Atlanta Hawks. And he's still a career 38% shooter from three. So that's going to be a great addition for Atlanta. Uh, he might not be the best defender, but he definitely can play in a team defensive setting. And overall, just a great signing for a team that needed some wing shooting and uh, just wings in general. And as I already mentioned, the Hawks then went into the draft and took Anyeka Akungu with the sixth overall pick. Now, Anyeka maybe slid a little bit or just had some extra worries. Uh, right up to the start of the draft because it was announced pretty late that he was dealing with a foot injury which ended up being a fractured toe but it's already been said that he should be good to go in about three weeks time max and um, you know I I was a little surprised to see him actually you know potentially slip because of the injury news because I know that uh, um, in my opinion and a lot of other draft boards opinions he was a top three talent in this class uh, there the Anyeka Akungu versus James Wiseman debate was a real one, and although Wiseman was seen as the better player by most of the mainstream media, uh, I feel like Anyeka could easily end up having a better career down the line. So overall, I think it was a great selection by the Hawks. Even if they do have Capella and John Collins in their front court right now, I think Anyeka could definitely still see a lot of minutes and maybe even potentially get some starting time over Clint Capella, depending on how the season goes, I think it's definitely a possibility. Then moving into free agency, this is where the Hawks really made their win now moves. Uh, again, they've been saying it all off season that they're trying to get Trey Young help now that he can use to make the playoffs and get some good experience you know, later into these NBA seasons. And they've done just that. They came out and signed Danilo Gallinari, to a three-year, $61 million deal. And Danilo Gallinari, he was one of the top names of this free agency class and what was overall a weaker class, but still a lot of great talents in it. Gallinari being one of them, he was probably the best wing scorer out there available for teams. And this is what the Hawks wanted. They wanted to surround Trey Young with some other players who could actually create their own shots and get their own buckets and also just be good off-ball threats as well. Danilo Gallinari, has been an excellent scorer for every team he's been on. And you know, it was only a matter of time before he finally gets to a place where he feels like he wants to be and the other and the team wants him back. He's been traded a few times, but now he enters free agency, chooses the Hawks. Hawks get their uh you get you know get one of their guys who they wanted and overall it's looking like it's gonna be a good pairing. Gallinari could easily be a twenty plus per game scorer in this offense and I'm excited to see how he does with Trey Young. Not to mention he'll also be bringing a very much needed veteran presence to the team. You know, Clint Capella, you could argue that he plays a similar role, although he is still a bit on the younger side. Whereas Gallinari, he's a guy who's been in the league for a while now, and the rest of this Hawks team is very young, as I'll get to a little bit later. But again, in addition to the scoring he's gonna bring to the table, he also brings a much needed veteran presence and just, you know, an older guy who can you know, show the ropes and help out the younger guys as they mature and develop and grow. The other addition that the Hawks have made, which I absolutely love and I've been begging for a good team to pick him up, is Chris Dunn. They signed him to a two-year $10 million deal, so very inexpensive at that too. 
and Chris Dunn, I have been raving for this guy all offseason. I think it was a mistake for the Bulls to not send a qualifying offer for him and to let him go into free agency that easily. But again, for those of you who don't know, Chris Dunn is t truly an all-defensive level defender at the guard position. He can guard ones, he can guard twos, even some threes he can guard very well. And he just gets into every passing lane. Great on-ball defender. So many steals and blocks and deflections. The only issue with Chris Dunn is that his shooting is <laughs> on the exact opposite end of the spectrum. While he's a great defender, his three-point shooting and just shooting in general lacks a lot. Um, I know Zach Lowe tweeted about it and he mentioned how Dunn has become a much better shooter when driving to the rim and scoring at the rim and just you know, in the paint in general. So that is great for him. But if he does truly want to see a bigger role and a bigger contract down the line, he's going to want to improve on his shooting. But either way, I absolutely love this pickup for the Hawks, especially when they have a guy like Trey Young being the other player in the backcourt right now. Trey Young is one of the worst defenders in the league, so matching him with Chris Dunn, one of the best defenders in the league at their positions, uh, it's going to be a match made in heaven because you have Trey Young, who can handle most of the offensive work, and you have Chris Dunn, who can handle almost all of the defensive work, so it should work out perfectly. Again, they both have their issues, uh, but hopefully this season, some of those issues get ironed out. And all of these great additions that I've mentioned, they're all joining a current rotation that is also very good and very young. A few of them I've already mentioned, but guys like Trey Young, Kevin Herter, Cam Reddish, they also have John Collins, uh, Clint Capella, and DeAndre Hunter. I almost forgot about DeAndre Hunter. But yeah, all those guys, great young talents who are all on their rookie deals. And being able to bring in all this extra talent, I think this is easily a playoff team at the least in a very weak Eastern Conference. Uh, I could even potentially see them getting as far up as the fifth seed, if I'm being honest with myself. Um, you know, this team will go as far as Trey Young can take them, as it's looking like he is going to take on that leader role from the point guard position. And based off his play last year, I think he's definitely capable of it. And I, again, I'm just very excited to see where this team goes. The only real question mark that is left, and it was one of those guys I just mentioned, is John Collins. He has come out and said that he wants a max extension from the Atlanta Hawks, but uh, in my opinion, it's becoming a bit more and more unlikely with every move they make that this might not be happening, as the Hawks have already, you know, they've already put a lot of money into Danilo Gallinari. Capella's on a pretty decently sized deal. And because they have so many young talents on the team that are all on rookie deals, those guys are eventually going to have to get paid down the line. Next season, both Trey Young and Kevin Herter will be up for extensions, and I'm assuming Trey Young will be receiving the max contract possible. Kevin Herter will probably make somewhere in the 10 to 15 million range per year. And then the year after that, they're going to have to pay Cam Reddish and DeAndre Hunter if they so choose to keep them. Cam Reddish is another guy who I could easily see making a max contract uh, depending on how he develops and plays this upcoming season and the next one after that and again DeAndre Hunter will probably be getting a similar role player type deal uh, probably in line with the one that Kevin Herter will get uh, if the again if the Hawks so choose to keep them but what I'm trying to get at is there's gonna be a lot of money being thrown around and I just don't know if it'll be in the Hawks best interest to throw a lot of money at a guy like John Collins uh, you know, in this upcoming season, he's going to have to get paid. So I just, I'm not sure if the Hawks are going to be willing to uh, put so much money towards a guy that they don't really have plans for or game plans for. At least that's what it seems like right now. And again, I could see him potentially leaving or they might use him as a trade piece this season near the deadline to go out and grab another guy like Danilo Gallinari, you know, a veteran presence who's on somewhat of a decent contract but can still provide some either you know shooting ability some closing ability late in games you know someone who can elevate them to a contend a, a true contending team but overall outside of john collins this team is truly looking primed to again win now and also they're going to be set up for their future they already have their you know franchise player in trey young and he seems to be happy in atlanta and willing to stay for the long run they just drafted Anyeka Akangwu, who will probably take over the starting center job at some point. Like I said, it could potentially even be this season. Although, um, while it is possible, I kind of doubt that will happen. Anyway, 
he'll probably assume that starting job at some point in his early career. Uh, they still have other young guys like Herder and Reddish who will provide great wing roles. You know, maybe Chris Dunn works out and stays. They'll probably move on from Gallinari at some point, but uh, by that point, they'll have DeAndre Hunter will be rising up the ranks. And again, this Hawks team is just looking like they're in very uh, in a very good spot right now. And we should all be very excited to see what they have in store for us, both this upcoming season and the coming in the you know next few seasons down the line. That'll be it for this video. Uh, as always, drop some comments down below on what you thought and think about the Hawks' current free agency moves. While you're down there, maybe think about dropping a like if you enjoyed this video and this type of content. Uh, but most importantly, as always, thank you for watching.